Hello, I'm Ian Rees and I'm a consultant with Adrian James Acoustics. In this video I'm going to discuss the assessment of noise from small wind turbines, sometimes referred to as micro turbines. Noise from these small wind turbines, which are usually installed in domestic and light industrial situations, is very different in nature to large wind turbines and wind farms and requires a different method of assessment. In contrast to commercial wind turbines, which have power ratings in megawatts and hub heights of up to 85 metres, micro turbines generally have power outputs of several kilowatts and typical heights of about 12 to 15 metres. Noise from large wind turbines and wind farms has become rather a hot topic over the past few years and is well documented in a number of high profile cases. This has undoubtedly affected the public perception of noise from all wind turbine developments, both large and small. One of the main issues concerning noise from wind turbines is that unlike many other types of mechanical plant which can be fitted with silencers and enclosures, if noise from a wind turbine becomes a problem there is very little that can be done to remedy this short of turning off the turbine completely. It is therefore vital that noise is properly considered at the planning stage before the wind turbine is installed. The widely used yet controversial ETSU R97 provides guidance on the assessment of noise from large wind farm developments, but this guidance does not apply to individual small turbines. Without definitive guidance on noise from micro turbines, planning conditions set by local authorities are often inconsistent, in some cases even unenforceable. Other forms of plant noise are usually assessed in accordance with BS4142. This is widely used by local authorities to determine whether a new industrial noise source is likely to give rise to complaint from people living in the vicinity. The standard basically sets out a method of assessment which compares the rating level of the plant noise against the background level in the absence of that noise. These must be assessed outside the nearest noise sensitive premises which are usually a dwelling. The rating level includes a character correction where noise has tonal or impulsive elements such as whines, hums, bangs or clicks. Generally where the rating level is at least 10 dB below the background level, complaints are considered to be unlikely. At the other end of the scale, a rating level exceeding the background by 10 dB or more is quite likely to attract complaints. In the middle, noise levels close to the background are considered to be of marginal significance. Strictly speaking, this method is not intended for assessing the very low noise levels you often find in quiet rural areas where wind turbines tend to be installed. Nevertheless, we found this to be a useful guide to assessing the likelihood of complaint in these areas, and this methodology is still accepted by many local authorities, even in these circumstances. Now, Some modification to the BS4142 measurement methodology is necessary for wind turbines because we need to measure background noise over a range of wind speeds and at higher speeds than the 5 meters per second limit recommended in BS4142. For this we can take guidance from BSEN 61400 part 11 and the 2008 BWEA small wind turbine performance and safety standard. These set out a procedure for measurement of noise from micro turbines. Measuring background noise levels on site using this methodology allows us to make a like for like comparison between specific noise from the turbine and background noise on site. There are an increasing number of wind turbine manufacturers now providing noise data for their wind turbines in the format prescribed in the BWEA standard. This is an example of a noise level provided for a micro turbine. The label shows the sound power level at a wind speed of 8 meters a second and the noise slope which is the rate of change in noise level with wind speed expressed in terms of dB per meter per second. The noise penalty box indicates whether the noise would incur a 5 dBA correction for tonal or impulsive elements as prescribed in BS4142. For our noise assessment, we need to establish a relationship between wind speed and background noise, which can be compared to the noise slope given in the manufacturer's data. As wind turbines generally run continuously, we need to measure when background noise is lowest, which is usually at night. Firstly, we set up a logging anemometer on a 10 meter mast at the proposed location of the wind turbine. We then set up the sound level meter close to the nearest noise sensitive premises. The microphone is placed on the ground board with a hemispherical windshield as prescribed in BS61400 part 11. 
This is intended to minimise wind noise on the microphone itself, as wind speed is theoretically lowest at ground level. We set the sound level meter in the anemometer to log measurements simultaneously at one minute intervals. Once we've collected the data, we plot the results in a scatter graph and use these to determine a linear regression, or line of best fit. This gives us our background noise slope. We can then compare this with the noise slope of the wind turbine, calculated outside the nearest noise sensitive premises. Taking the worst case point, where wind turbine noise is highest compared to background noise, we can assess the difference between these against the BS4142 criteria. This methodology allows simple yet technically robust planning conditions to be set for proposed microturbine installations. An example of such a condition might be as follows. Noise from the proposed wind turbine, calculated in terms of LAEQ one minute outside the nearest noise sensitive premises, shall not exceed the lowest background noise level, measured in terms of LA90 one minute, by more than 5 dBA at all wind speeds up to 10 meters a second. Such a condition can be discharged with a relatively simple and cost-effective assessment prior to installation of the turbine. We have carried out a number of these assessments to date, all of which have been accepted by local authorities. I hope this video has been helpful and provided some useful guidance on the subject. You can find out more information to our website at www.adrianjamesacoustics.com or call us if we can be of further assistance.